chapter two, we're going to dive into safety tools and a customer agreement contract so that you and the customer know exactly what's going to happen before you do the extraction. Safety. We cannot talk about safety enough, especially ladder safety. Most of your extractions are probably going to require a ladder. We have provided a video and we encourage you to spend time in this video and completely understand ladder safety before you dive into any extractions. One of the things that we encourage is a butt assist. This buddy system would allow you to be able to utilize a ladder safely. Safety for you, for the customer, and for the honeybees should be your top priority. When you're doing an extraction, evaluate the area and make the area clear enough when you're doing this extraction so nobody else is, is hurt when you're doing this extraction, whether it be a ladder falling or the honeybees themselves. You'll find many times when you do extractions, people want to watch. They are intrigued. They want to see what's going on. We have an asphalt machine today that has honeybees inside. So we are safely backing these bees off of the comb, and then we will cut the comb out and relocate the comb into these frames, which are going in the nook box, and we'll take it back to the apiary and transfer it into a hive box. But on any kind of extraction, you obviously want to have your equipment ready. So we've got our safe vac right there that Jesse is vacuuming those bees. Um, that particular piece of comb has some brood on it. I'm kind of figuring once we cut that out that the queen might be on the back side. We have our queen clip ready on top of the back right here as you can see. But each extraction is a little different. Um, this one happens to be, like I said, inside of a asphalt machine that they just purchased. Found that they had honeybees, didn't want to kill them, so they gave us a call. But each extraction uh, will have the basics, uh, whatever you're going to use to collect the bees. Sometimes um, if you have enough time to sit there and go through the comb and find the queen, you can do that, put her in a clip, set your box right there, and then the bees will just march right in. But when you're charging a client by the hour, um, it's not really prudent to sit there and spend an hour or two try to find the queen when we can safely back the bees, look for the queen, see if we can get her in the clip and get her into the hive box. And we will safely extract these bees, put these bees in a controlled temperature environment and get them to the apiary safe. So that is what our plan is today. Again, you can see Jesse is finishing up the front side of this comb here. If we don't get the queen or something happens to the queen between here and the apiary, they're gonna be able to use that comb. If that doesn't work, we can provide another frame of eggs from another hive that we have. If that doesn't work, then what we'll do is we'll actually provide a queen for them. You must keep that area safe, allow you to extract those honeybees to where nothing happens where you're going to be liable. When we think of safety, many times we don't think of hydration. I'm gonna tell you what, it's hot, so you gotta stay hydrated. Hydration is important when you're doing extractions. Did you know that you can actually drink through your veil? Now make sure you don't have a lot of honeybees flying around when you are gonna drink through your veil because your nose is probably gonna be touching and you might get stung there. So stay hydrated when you're doing extractions. The other thing is your bee suit. Your bee suit could be one that's very ventilated and, and not uh, uh, holding in your heat. We have a brand new colony up in this joist area. So hydration, staying uh, temperature controlled while you're doing extractions is very important. And the last thing we want to talk about when we talk about safety is your PPE, personal protective equipment. Now you are going to see some crazy, crazy things out there on the internet when it comes to honeybee extractions. Don't be the one that doesn't wear their PPE. That would be having a suit or having a jacket and then having proper footwear 
that allows you to safely extract honeybees, having gloves, wearing gloves, and staying completely covered when you're extracting honeybees. PPE, do not cut corners on PPE. We have listed a number of tools, and in our videos that you will watch, you will see the tools that are needed to do the specific extractions. Okay, we have an apartment complex here that has honeybees in the joist between the first floor and the second floor. We've got all our tools out to successfully extract these honeybees safely. Um, you really need to know construction to, uh, to do these type of cutouts. This is our uh, safe bee vac. We've got our frames already ready to uh, pull the comb out. These joists will be on about uh, anywhere from uh, 16 inch centers, uh, 12 to 16 inch centers roughly. And so the comb will be running from front to back here. We'll vac the front bees and then cut that first piece of comb out. And then we're gonna safely put it in these frames, put it in that nook box. Actually, the frames will go inside the uh, uh, ice chest to keep the uh, larva from drying out so that if we do not get the queen, we will have her eggs in here so they can requeen. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with this. We drilled a pilot hole. We do have an endoscope and uh, we ran the endoscope in there to verify that we are correctly in between the two joists to safely remove these honeybees. So we're gonna open this up, start extracting. One of the things that we really use a lot is thermal imaging and endoscope. Okay, so we did our heat signature, which said that the bees were somewhere in that area because of the heat signature. We drilled a pilot hole using our endoscope. We went down inside and we found that the bees are right over in here in this joist area. So we have a center right here and we have a center right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to pull those nails, take our skill saw. That's about an inch and a half. We'll measure it, but that's about an inch and a half. We'll put the blade an inch and a half and we'll make a cut across here, down the center of that joist, the center of this joist, and then make a cut across here, pull this up, back the bees, cut the comb out, find where the entrance is, seal it with uh, this steel wool, and then we'll foam it, clean all the comb real good, and this one will be a wrap with the exception of taking these honeybees back to a uh, holding apiary for 30 days and let them readjust. And then we will be off and running with some new honeybees. We'll be using this vac system today. We do have one that we've made, but this is one we purchased and we're gonna try it out. So we're gonna get after it. This allows us to pinpoint exactly where these honeybees are at and know what's underneath that structure with the endoscope so that when we're cutting it open, we're not cutting into pipes or wires. We always recommend setting your blade no more than an eighth of an inch deep of whatever the structure is that you're cutting so that you don't cut through other things. Tools are going to be valuable. There'll be different tools needed for different types of extractions. And the videos you're going to watch will show you exactly which tools are needed for each extraction. Dive into the BVAC real quick. Again, it's going to be one of the tools potentially you may use in your extractions. The BVAC can be made homemade. There's a number of them that you can make. Some are better than others. The key to a VAC, whether it's a professional VAC or homemade VAC, is the airflow. To be able to adjust the airflow so that the bees are not brought in too hard into the cavity that they're going to stay in. I do want to stress, never use a wet dry vac to directly vac bees up. That will kill the bees. Do not use a wet dry vac. In making your vac or buying a vac is actually having some place for the honeybees to rest on once they get into the cavity that they're going to be staying in until they, you get them to your apiary. One of the things that we do not do is we do not extract honeybees 
from a cavity that would be a tree or a cutout over 85 degrees. We wait until the temperature is under 85 degrees. We have found if you extract over 85, your chances of a lot of those bees not making it to the apiary go up. The last thing we are going to cover in chapter two is your contract agreement with the customer. This is very important to have in place so that you and the customer completely understand what is going to take place before you start. We in our company, we do not do repairs. We recommend that the customer contact a sheetrock, masonry, wood person, or someone who is going to fix the hole that we are going to make. We do not do repairs. We are bee removers, not remodelers. We have provided an example of an agreement that you might use when it comes to honeybee extractions.